Hi, today we're going to talk about a free body diagram for a box on a ramp. This is a box on a ramp that's just sitting there, and so friction is acting on it. So we have two goals for this session. We're going to cover the free body diagram, how to draw it, what to do with it, and then we will use our free body diagram to help us apply Newton's second law to the situation, and ultimately what we're going to do is determine how the coefficient of static friction is related to the angle of the incline of the ramp when the box uh, just starts to slide. So it'll tell us something about friction. Okay, so here is the scenario. We simply have a ramp. It's got uh, it's inclined at a particular angle theta with respect to the horizontal, and it is at rest. And this is the largest angle we can put the ramp at and have the block stay there. If we go any bigger with our angle, then the block will slide. So it's just about to slide. And this is very important because we know we're at the limiting case for static friction. Okay, so static friction is keeping this here. And if this is the biggest angle we can get to, we must be using the absolute maximum value of the force of static friction. And we'll use that in a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to draw a free body diagram of this box on the incline. And what does that mean? It means we're going to show the different forces that act on the block. So, uh, what do you think they are? Okay, so think about which forces you want to draw acting on this block or this box on the free body diagram. Okay, so really there are just two forces here. There is the force of gravity that acts straight down. That is the interaction between the box and the earth. So the earth applies a force on the block of the box. I guess I'm using these things interchangeably. Let's go, let's go with the box. So the earth is exerting a downward force of gravity on the box, and that's this downward mg force. And then the ramp actually exerts a vertically upward contact force. But we usually split that force into components. And we know that the normal force is perpendicular to the surface, to the ramp surface. And the friction force, and it's static friction because the box remains at rest on the ramp here, static friction force goes up the slope. Okay, so there's a component of gravity trying to pull the box down the slope friction is resisting that and it goes up the slope. And this is in fact Fs max, the maximum value Fs can be in this case. Now uh, I did say that the contact force, these two components, the normal and the force of friction, these two components when you put them together give you a contact force that is absolutely vertical. Well how do you know that? Well you know actually the force applied by the ramp on the box, that's the contact force, this contact force has to be equal and opposite to the force of gravity applied by the Earth on the box. That's the only way the box would have zero net force on it and sit there. Because no other thing's exerting forces on the box in this particular scenario. Okay, so there's our free body diagram. Now we're going to pick a coordinate system here because we're going to apply Newton's second law in a few minutes, so we need a coordinate system. So what we want to do here is, well really you could pick anything, but um, we often pick a coordinate system which is aligned with the incline. And that's actually a very good one to use in this particular case because we see our static friction force is parallel to the incline, so that's in the negative x direction, it's all x, no y and the normal force is all y and no x. So we go to split things into components, we don't break the normal force up, we don't break the static friction force up. Okay, So that's why it's a good one to choose in this particular case. And if the box eventually accelerates, then you really want your coordinate system to align with the direction of the acceleration. So that'll be most likely your x direction here down the ramp. So it's a good one thinking ahead in case the box starts sliding as well and starts accelerating. Okay, so now we have to break forces into components parallel to these coordinate axes. So we just talked about how we do not need to break 
static friction force up because it's already all in the x direction. We do not need to break the normal force up into components because it's already all in the y direction. So the only one we need to break up is the force of gravity. Okay, so let's focus on that for a minute. So we really want to know how much of mg goes down the slope and how much of it goes into the slope perpendicular to the interface. Okay, so let's draw a nice right angle triangle. So we draw one side parallel to the y-axis, the other side parallel to the x-axis. Now theta, this angle theta that's down at the bottom of the slope, must fit into this triangle someplace. So where does it go? Well, first of all, you can see there's another triangle, another right angle triangle, not the MG with the dashed lines, but this one where you go from the uh, bottom left vertex of the ramp over to MG, up MG, and then down the hypotenuse. Look at that. You get theta at the left, you get 90 degrees down by the tip of MG, and so you must have 90 minus theta up at the top of that triangle. And so the other angle, next the other angle on the far side of MG has to be theta. Okay, so there's theta in our triangle. So now we can split MG into components and we can figure out which one goes with the sine and which one goes with the cosine. So remember the opposite side goes with the sine, the adjacent side goes with the cosine. Okay, so we have in our x direction the component is MG sine theta, that's the side that's opposite the theta in our triangle. And then our, in our y direction, our negative y direction, we have a component of gravity, which is mg cosine theta. That's adjacent to the theta angle in our triangle. Okay, so we split mg up into components now. Okay, so basically what we do is we replace the downward mg force by these two forces aligned with the coordinates uh, axes. And we really did that right up front with the normal force, uh, sorry, with the contact force, splitting it up into a normal force component and a friction force component. So we're really doing the same thing with the force of gravity that we did with the contact force. So when we're done, we have two components of the force of gravity, mg sine theta and mg cos theta, and two components of the contact force, that's the normal force and the force of static friction. And all these things together have to balance each other out. Okay, so there is our full free body diagram for this particular case of the box on the ramp with everything shown in its component form. Okay, so that's going to be uh, useful to us when we go to apply Newton's second law in a minute. Okay, so when we apply Newton's second law, what we do is we apply it twice. Once for the x direction and once for the y direction. Okay. So, what does that mean? Well, that means in the x direction, we just write this down. You can do this automatically in any two-dimensional situation. Just write down. No matter what the free body diagram looks like, you can write this down. Sum of all the forces added up as vectors in the x direction is the mass of the object times the acceleration in the x direction. Same thing in the y direction. We just have y's in our equation instead of x's now. Sum of all the forces in the y direction has to be the mass times the acceleration in the y direction. It's the whole mass times the y component of the, of the acceleration. Okay, and to apply these, we need to do, to evaluate the left-hand side. So to help us do that, we've got our free body diagram. Okay, so for each of our equations, each of those two, the equation actually says, sum up all the forces in the x direction, set them equal to the, to the right hand side. For the y direction, sum up all the forces in the y direction as vectors, set them equal to the right hand side. So we evaluate the left hand side of each equation by looking at the forces which are in x and y components on our free body diagram. Okay, so let's give it a shot. Okay, and we also have our uh, positive directions here shown. X is, positive X is down the slope, positive Y is up and to the left, perpendicular to the ramp. So let's start with the X direction. We have two forces in the X direction. We have mg sine theta going down the slope, so that's positive. So we get plus mg sine theta. 
and our other force in the x direction is this fs force which is up the slope and this is not any old fs it's fs max remember because we're at the maximum angle before the block starts to slide so we need the maximum possible force of static friction here to prevent the box sliding okay so our equation says mg sine theta minus fs max equals zero so we can take that a little bit further we can say mg sine theta equals fs max and because we've got an equal sign here we know it's fs max actually because we know it's fs max we can use the equal sign in fs is less than or equal to mu s fn it's equal to mu s fn when you've got the maximum possible force of static friction so then we've got mg sine theta is mu s times the normal force okay so now we got to get a handle on what the normal force is so we can use this x direction equation well what's going to tell us about the normal force well the y direction is going to tell us all about the normal force because the normal force is in there in the y direction so our y direction equation we again have two forces in the y direction on our free body diagram fn is positive it's in the positive y direction and then mg cosine theta is the only other y direction force it's going into the ramp which is our negative y direction so we get plus fn minus mg cos theta equals zero okay so we can solve for fn here fn is now mg cosine theta okay so now we're ultimately going to try and solve for mu here okay so what we're going to do is put our equations together so let's write them down again there they are the left one came from the x direction forces the right one came from applying Newton's second law in the y direction and so what we're going to do is replace fn in the left hand equation by mg cosine theta which is what we have in our right hand equation so then we get mg sine theta is mu s times mg cosine theta and that's really nice because right away we see that we can cancel out factors of m on both sides and cancel out factors of g on both sides so that tells you a lot of things that tells you if you tilt this ramp higher and higher until the box slides on the earth and you get a particular value you go to any other planet or do it on the moon or wherever you want you get the same answer you get the same maximum angle that makes the box slide because g canceled out from the equation Okay. So if g doesn't matter, then it doesn't matter where you do this experiment in the solar system or in the universe. The value of g there is irrelevant. Uh, m also canceled out. Okay, So the mass of the box is irrelevant too. You could have a 2 kilogram box and do this. You take a 20 kilogram box, a 200 kilogram box of exactly the same material as your 2 kilogram box. Do the same experiment. It's, they all slide at the same angle. Okay, so what angle do they slide at? Well, let's solve for mu here. So mu is simply sine over cosine, sine theta over cosine theta, which is just tan theta. Okay? So this tells us something really cool about the coefficient of static friction. It's really easy to measure. Okay? So you just put one object on another, and then you tilt them until the top object starts to slide over the bottom object. You take the tangent of the angle when the measure from the horizontal when the top object starts to slide and the tangent of that angle is the coefficient of static friction so this is how, how you actually measure coefficients of static friction you place one object on another tilt them till they slide measure the angle of the tilt take the tangent that's your mu okay so that is it for uh, today's session drawing a nice free body diagram and applying it to find out something interesting about the coefficient of static friction.